reprise de deport, the Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to speak today to the motion by the member for Pontiac asking for action to be taken to address the missing remarkably $3.1 billion. Canadians expect their government to be good public administrators of the public purse. They expect their elected representatives, regardless of party affiliation, to carefully scrutinize spending and to hold the government accountable. Canadians expect responsible and sound fiscal management. In turn, Canadian taxpayers expect their government to use their monies to provide the critical services we all rely upon. In every circumstance, it's unthinkable that a government would be irresponsible in tracking and reporting 100% of their spending. This is all the more the case where it involves a commitment to spend $12.9 billion on public security and anti-terrorism. I feel confident, Mr. Speaker, saying that Canadian taxpayers share the concerns raised by the Federal Auditor General in his spring 2013 audit report regarding $3.1 billion of that amount not yet accounted for. Thank you very much. This will in all likely be of concern to Canadians as the very services they rely upon are hindered by the cut, cuts to frontline services, including to pensions, tacking, uh, tracking of tax fraud, for example. This is particularly galling when the government is asking Canadians to do more with less. Some have suggested, metaphorically, that the Conservatives could take another look between the sofa cushions to find the misplaced $3.1 billion. All joking aside, Mr. Speaker, the failure to account, Mr. Speaker, the failure to account for this amount of taxpayers' monies is a very serious matter. And contrary to what the government has alleged, the Auditor General has expressed concern. Firstly, this is what he and the Assistant Auditor General had to say the Public Accounts Committee a week back after determining that $3.1 billion was missing between 2001 and 2009. When asked what happened in 2010, he advised, our audit only went up in this time period, and at the end of this time period, this method of reporting was stopped. The Assistant Auditor General then added this, in quotes, the Treasury Board Secretariat has stopped collecting data from the departments in terms of the annual reports and are in the process of putting together another framework that they hope will have in place by, I think, sometime in 2014. Mr. Speaker, that's an incredible gap in accountability. In the text of the Auditor General's report, he says at point 8.24, in 2010, the Treasury Board approved the Secretariat's request to end the government-wide reporting requirements on initiative spending. The last reports entered into the database are those related to the 2008-2009 fiscal year. The Secretariat stated it would develop a new mechanism for managing and collecting performance information on the public security initiatives. At the time of the audit, a project was in the pilot stage, but a new mechanism was not yet in place not terribly reassuring. Treasury has allowed a gap of four years in tracking spending by departments and in such a serious, important area. The President of the Treasury Board has tried to pass the buck to the departments, saying it's their duty to report, and besides, the reports can be found on the public accounts. Perhaps he could show Canadians where, since neither we nor the Auditor General can find the $3.1 billion reported as spent or for what purpose. He has alleged that the Auditor General found no fault in the monitoring and reporting on this total committed $12.9 billion for public security spending. Yet the Auditor General's report is quite clear. The Auditor General does find problems. Let me share this quote from his news release on his report. And I quote, the Treasury Board Secretariat was required to prepare summary reports for Treasury Board. The audit found that these reports were not provided. Though the Secretariat was the only department collecting detailed information, performance information, on public security investments, it did not use this information to generate a government-wide perspective of PSAT spending and results, nor did, it, nor did any other federal department or agency. In the absence of any sort of overall monitoring and reporting, information to explain the difference 
of $3.1 billion between the funding allocated to departments and agencies and the amount reported spent was not available. He further says, we believe that the government missed an opportunity to use the information it collected to generate a picture of spending and results under the public security and anti-terrorism initiative across departments. He then adds, the government recognizes that it needs to improve the way it reports financial and non-financial information for future government-wide initiatives. Mr. Speaker, why is the apparent loss somewhere, um, somewhere, possibly these billions in issue? Well, there are many ways, as my colleagues have mentioned, that these monies could have been spent to benefit Canadians and frankly protect our security. There's no suggestion that addressing terrorism or ensuring national security is not important. It's because of, of it, it is important that as elected officials, we're responsible for ensuring that once dollars are committed for that purpose, they must in fact be used for that purpose. The government does have the power to redirect budget allocations, which they regularly do through supplementary estimates. But there's no evidence that this has occurred in this instance. Even more troubling, Mr. Speaker, is the apparent lack of policy supporting uh, um, revenue sources. For example, well, go on. For instance, perhaps a thought could be given to the reverse of the staffing cuts to the Canadian Revenue Agency. Um, as my colleague has raised numerous times in the House, Mr. Speaker, uh, we have been seriously concerned that there are missing $29 billion in uncollected taxes. And uh, just a fraction of the missing $3.1 billion, of course, could restore the conservative cuts to that agency. Uh, we are reassured that finally, after raising this concern several uh, weeks in a row, uh, the Minister has agreed to finally restore some dollars to the agency. We're not totally sure yet whether or not they, they have restored the audit and compliance staff. Certainly it's an important matter. Apparently, um, so where's the action and accountability on that? The Conservatives don't seem to be worried about money that slips through the cracks. They are more interested in cutting from programs that support the vulnerable in our society. For example, my colleague from Laval Les Îles has brought forward Bill C-480, which would allow seniors to withdraw money from their RSP to advance pay their funeral expenses. Um, what this government has done is they ratchet that back, they claw that back from the GIS payments. So we're talking about seniors who are living in the poverty line. That's why they need to receive a GIS. And so we have been proposing that at a mere 132,000, uh, all seniors could, could be covered. So, the government seems to show very little concern. It's only $3.1 billion. Um, how much time do I have left, Mr. Speaker? Two minutes? We, though, are very concerned about the lack of tracking of the spending of this money in the same way that we're concerned that they seem to give short shrift to the potential for revenue generation, as I mentioned, to collecting taxes that have not been paid and also to be putting uh, proper charges on uh, those that exploit our resources. One area, Mr. Speaker, that we're particularly concerned about is um, Aboriginal affairs. Um, the government, in thinking that it was going to increase accountability, decided to pick on one segment of our society. Two segments, actually. They're picking on unions, and then they picked on First Nations. And they said, okay, you have to be more accountable, and you have to report over and over again, and be accountable for every spent, uh, cent that you spend. And yet here they are simply saying, it's only $3.1 billion, what's the big deal? You might eventually find it if you pour through the public accounts. So Mr. Speaker, there just seems to be an incredible degree of hypocrisy here. And nowhere greater is there that hypocrisy than when we come to the youth. And uh, in my own riding, and I'm sure that every member of parliament, first of all, we have the privilege of taking a look at what the government is going to allocate for summer jobs. And I have to tell you, Mr. Speaker, it was very painful this year because more than half of those Canadians who offered up jobs to students got turned down. We can't be bothered, this government, finding $3.1 billion when Aboriginal organizations, the University of Alberta, I could go on and on. It broke my heart to be able to have to sign off on a report saying, okay, this group will get student jobs and all these fantastic organizations who would like to hire students can't. That's a whole lot of students in my riding that aren't gonna get summer employment, may not be able to continue their education. 
So just in closing, Mr. Speaker, I find this issue absolutely critical to our job as members of Parliament. We are elected, all of us in this House, whatever our partisan um, affiliation, to hold the government accountable for spending. And I expect the Conservative members as well to be equally um, astonished and upset with the apparent uh, lack of care and attention to $3.1 billion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? Question and commentaire. The Honourable Deputy de... The Honourable Member for Bhopal Limoilou. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague for her speech. It's a speech that I found very reasonable, given what's been asked for, just as reasonable as the motion by our colleague the member for Pontiac, because in the end, Mr. Speaker, we're not asking for the moon. We're simply asking to have everything we need to understand what happened with that $3.1 billion that has been lost somewhere in drawers or we don't really know. $3.1 billion, that's a pretty big amount of money. You'll hear about that later on. There are many families that would need that money that would be looking under pillowcases and mattresses to find it. It was reasonable what we've asked for and given our experiences in different committees, and I know my colleague has had even more experience than I have, which must have been very difficult at times. What does she think of how opaque the government is being with this type of situation? How the government is hiding operations of this type? member for his question, and it's an absolute pleasure working in this place with him. And it's an equal honor to work with the member for Pontiac on uh, the OGO committee. Um, something that is so distressing about this to discover that this mere $3.1 billion is missing is in the committee that I work in, the OGO committee, we issued a report which we spent months upon months and consulted with, with renowned experts from around the world on is how we can make sure that elected members can hold the government accountable on spending. And we made a series of recommendations on how that can come about and, and mechanisms are being implemented around the world in other democracies. And what was the response of this government? Essentially, they just threw the report back in our faces. Absolutely reprehensible. There was sincere work cooperatively by all parties in this House on that report. And you know, the response that they're giving to the missing $3.1 I say, is essentially the same, and it's by the same minister, the President of the Treasury. It's just reprehensible. I mean, this is not a small amount of money, and it was allocated for a very serious matter. Questions and comments? Question and commentaire. The Honourable Deputy de Montmorency. The Honourable Member for Montmorency, Côte no. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My colleague from bhopal Limolo said that we weren't looking for the moon. That's what I've been saying. Does the Auditor General have the tools that he, that he needs in order to do his job? Uh, my question is about transparency, which is so important to Conservatives. We could use the example of the fact that they've invested million dollars, millions of dollars, to spy on each other because they can't talk to each other. That's the reply we got earlier. So I would like my colleague to elaborate on transparency that is so precious to Conservatives and the fact that there's no dialogue going on within this uh, caucus. Thank you. Edmonton Strathcona. Well, Mr. Speaker, it's a bit of a complicated question, but I thank the Honourable Member. Um, but I, I will speak to the first part of his question, which has troubled me from the day I entered this place uh, in 2008. This is a government that ran on a, a platform of open, transparent, participatory government. And in the time that they have been here, they have shredded every policy and practice that could provide that. They have made the institution of government incredibly undemocratic. Now, if there's one obligation that they have that we had hoped that they would um, stick with, it is the responsibility to be accountable. Mr. Speaker. It, it, it is like
like a youth parliament, Mr. Speaker. I'm getting reprehensible comments over here. Our main responsibility in this place is to hold the government accountable for spending, every single one of us elected to this office. And what we are asking today is reasonable, what the Auditor General has asked for is reasonable, and we can only hope that the government will finally respond with respect. Resuming debate, we are pleased to debut.